We have a special guest with us. Mike Biner is an American writer, filmmaker, stand-up comedian, and actor. He's directed films starring Kevin Costner, Adam Sandler, Ben Affleck, and Octavia Spencer. His acting credits include Steven Spielberg's Minority Report, and he wrote the 2016 novel entitled Keep Calm, and he currently produces a comedy-themed stub stack called Stand Up World. Plus, he also did the uh, Comedy Store documentary series on Showtime and lots more things. Please welcome Mike Binder. Hey, how you doing? Hey, thanks. Welcome to the show. It's great to have you on. I'm really happy to be on the show. I, I, I really enjoy it a lot. I watch it a lot. <laughs> So we're going to talk about this today. So you wrote this okay. you wrote this article over at uh, Stand Up World. It says what does it mean to be brave as a comedian in today's world? And so let me just read a little bit of it to the people will get it start. It says what what does it take to piss off the powers that be nowadays? In the ways that Richard Pryor, Lenny Bruce, Mort Saul, George Carlin, Joan Rivers did in their day. Who is brave and bold today in that way in the world of stand-up? Is it pushing the envelope to simply berate white women, even if it's funny? Does that make a smart comic brave? Does crudely and in detail talking about sex as a woman comic make you someone that courageously walks the edge today? In Yemen. (laughs) Is it as risky as some of the other stuff Pryor and Paul Mooney or even Eddie Murphy or Chris Rock or Bill Hicks were doing as they were breaking through? The best stand-up is always counterculture. It always spanks the elites and those that have their hands on the wheel and in the till. It's telling us things we're not supposed to hear, didn't want to hear, through humor. Now, most comedians stopped doing that during COVID. I would say, yeah, during COVID, maybe even a little before uh, well, COVID. A lot before COVID. A lot, I was, okay, I would say before COVID. Let me just get, Some of the most successful and respected and so-called edgy comics today are not brave in the slightest. At least not in the last five or ten years, they haven't been. They've been fake brave, and we've accepted it. They, by and large, have been pretending to be willing to push the buttons, to be telling the truth, giving the crowd exactly what they know they want to hear. Yes, they're talented as hell, but with the with the wind at their backs, they're playing the same game state sponsored media has been playing in the same time period. Whoa, that now what, Mike? Let me bring you in now. Name names first of all. Start <laughs> naming names. No, and um, <laughs> now I've known you as a comedian. You know, before I was even a comedian, so you're somebody who knows the ins and outs of the stand up game, and it's obviously close to your heart. So tell me, what led you to write that and say those things? Oh, just tired of it. <laughs> she got tired of it and also inspired by a few people, you being one of them, that, that are telling the truth. And I just, um, you know, actually, I, I just, you know, it's just, you do, you get tired of it. You get tired of even, you know, I just got back into doing stand-up again since last June. You know, and you just get tired of realizing, you know, you just the things you can't do or you say, oh, I'm going to try this joke out. And your wife and your kids or your friends go, you can't do that. You can't say that, you know, or, or you know, and uh, you realize or, you know, and, you know, I've been writing this platform stand up world for a couple of years. And as I wrote in there you know i really love this jim brewer special that he wrote called somebody had to say it about the vaccine so uh, here, yeah here it is so you wrote this article that was in 2022 yeah it was february 7 2022 it says jim brewer not your father's goat boy right so and you wrote it, and at it the, was, go ahead. right and it, and it was really about this special that he had called somebody had to say it got someone's got to say it yes and it was mostly about blowing up the COVID narrative. He was the first comedian I saw on film. It was for his special. He did. and uh, he was he was pushing back against the ridiculousness around uh, all of it, all of it. So, and it was a lot of it was very funny. I thought. I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was brilliant, and he was so physical and crazy, and I just I really thought he was brave. Because he was brave. It was definitely brave. It was at a time when nobody was pushing back at all. 
And he was really talking about how just the fact that you're not allowed to ask, say anything, you know, and, and I just wrote about that and, and how, how he made me laugh, this guy, you know, and, and boy, I got in a lot of trouble. I, and I had a lot of friends call me and tell me to knock it off. And, and I, I was so surprised by it. And, you know, at the time, I think I had on Twitter, just by being a comedian and having a TV show for a couple of years, I had a hundred thousand or something, 80,000 Twitter followers. I immediately just dropped down to nothing. And, and then, and then, I, you know, I, I just basically Twitter just throws me out. And then when I, my buddy, Bobby Kennedy, who was, has been my friend for 30 years more, he came out with the book, the Fauci book, and I read it, and it was great. Yeah, it's a great book. Let me before we get to that, let me just show what you have to say about the Jim Brewer. You said when you wrote that article, a lot of my friends got pissed off at me over it. I think Twitter throttled me. I thought I was safe. I've been a registered Democrat my whole life, donated to the right causes, walked the walk, thought I could write about whatever I wanted to, thought I was inoculated. More vaccine bashing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was wrong, he says. I mean, so, I could have told you this 10 years ago. I told everybody like 10 years ago, like, no. I mean, I had to be one of those guys. But you were I, really, I really did tell everybody years ago. Yeah. And everybody wanted to still be cool with the industry. And one by one, a whole bunch of people were like, hey, they're all, this This isn't right. <laughs> I don't mean my, I don't like my, yeah. I've been watching this for a while. It was way before COVID. I mean, I mean like, and what it is, is not stand up, it's showbiz. Showbiz. Yeah. Like everything gets, they get conflated all the time. But you could always do stand up. Louis is still doing stand up. Yeah. Okay showbiz is the thing that you, and that's where all the nonsense is going on and yeah you have to be a scientologist if you want to be in good graces with the the you know the scientology business stand up's the lowest rung of, sh of comedy uh, it, I've loved, uh, you can't get that that's what you get sent to as a punishment uh, <laughs> stand up's the lowest rung of show business showbiz i'm sorry yeah. <laughs> so when you wrote that article mike about jim brewer's special and it was and his special was all about pushing back against the covid narrative uh, you had a famous comedian, I think I want to say his name, Don Knotts. He called Don you. Knotts. <laughs> yeah, it was Don, it was Don Knotts. And hey, you, what are you talking about? And you had this, uh, and you had this conversation with him about Jim Brewer's special. He was upset at you for writing something nice about it. And then you asked him, and I'll show it. And you asked this comedian, you asked him, did he see it? And Don Knotts says this. He says, fuck no, I didn't see it. I'm not going to watch some anti-science thing. Misinformation like that is just going to get more people killed. And the people that don't get the vax are going to prolong this damn thing and then screw it all up for everyone else. Oh, please say who it is. No, it's Don Knotts. <laughs> well, if everyone else has the vaccine, then you say, but, but, do you, oh, but this, this is, is what they thought. So you can't, like, as Joe Rogan says, that I, if I didn't, if, if Joe Rogan didn't have access to all the people and information that he does, he would have thought like this. And I did think like this at the beginning. I thought just like, so well, I don't. I di here's the thing. Go ahead. Jimmy, I didn't because I was friends with Bobby Kennedy. Right. And, and, and I read, actually, I think I, I think I read a manuscript of the book, you okay. know, but, but even that, I just also, and I read. I listen. Oh, that's not good. That's not because you're desperate. No, it's not good. Ford like said not special. to do that. We don't need no reader. I love that bit. <laughs> but, but you know, so what happened was I would, early on, I would say things to guys like this guy who I was working with, and they would get mad at me. And I was like, I'm just, listen, it doesn't matter. I, I, look, at, I had to get the vaccine because I was working on a show, and I had to get it. And But um, I just said, there's some questions about it. It's okay, you know, and and even now, you know, listen, even now with everything that's come out, everything that's come out, you know, they still deny it. Don't you know it's anti-science to attack someone's faith? And they and, and they mem <laughs> and they memory hole everything. They memory hole like the fact that they said it would stop contraction, it would stop the transmission, and then it would end the pandemic if everybody got vaccinated. They have now memory hold that. They pretend like nobody ever said that. And well, then they, they say you still say it. A bunch of them. They, and well, they the have, biggest thing they memory hold. The biggest thing they memory hold was they said that this was a 
pandemic of the anti-vax uh, of the unvaccinated. They yeah, said yeah, it was yeah, a pandemic, right. and that you was know, and and that that the people that aren't getting the vac- vaccine are keeping this thing going. Yes. And and they, they, you know, it was okay to lay them off and to ostracize them and to and that they know now they were dead wrong about that. And nobody, when I talk to my friends now and say, look, you know, that was just wrong. And that's what Jim, Jim Brewer, you know, so it was wrong to to get down on Jim Brewer for having that special. No, there's no, yeah, I was wrong. There's just, there's nothing. And that's to me what's going on here is is it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to be wrong. Yes. But 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 it because and you said it's so great in your in your special. That's what science is. You, that's what this this whole thing that we went through. We ha- we were we were clawing our way through the dark it's okay if we made mistakes what's not okay is to to not to shame inquiry questions along the way yeah to shame inquiry that you're not supposed right. to do that you're not so what i say in my special and i've talked about this on the show is that the, this idea that you have to trust science you don't trust science that's not science is a way of thinking and it's a way of thinking skeptically and there's never something called settled science because that's why we know about black holes and the speed of light and emc equals mc squared uh, is because Einstein didn't accept the science of gravity that Newton talked about. He questioned it, and that's how you've moved forward. That's how you always move forward. So people say, when they say, I trust the science, what they mean is I have blind faith in what the guy who says he's a scientist on television says, I, and I'm not going to question what he says. And so you want to say the, something real yeah, quick, the Kurt? consensus, you know, consensus. Consensus. You know what, remember, you're the guy who figured out you need to wash the doctor, Ingo, something. Yeah, like I wash your hands. Yeah, because the doctor's. They, yeah, it was like twenty percent higher death of babies because right. they were working with corpses and then delivering and babies. then delivering babies. And he realized, and they didn't go, "Oh, great!" Now unless they they ran him out of his job That's and he right. died in his insane asylum. That's right. So this idea. So let me get. Let me just wait, wait before you move on. Can I tell you one funny thing? Yes. One just little sure. funny caveat to this conversation that you, behind you. Yes. Right before. I got on with you today right now. I got an email from this guy who I don't want to say his name. Don Knotts. <laughs> Don Knotts. <laughs> but, but one of his employees says sends me an email that I hadn't talked to in a couple of years. Says, hey, great job, bad mouth and so-and-so and his wife. And, you, and I said, I, I didn't mention his name. He goes, oh, come on. You didn't have to when the, the way he was talking about the vax and all that. You know that was him. <laughs> Good. I said okay. So, but I've had. So, my point is, you can't. I can't blame those people. Like, here, I just want to get back to my point. So, I, I, I totally understand how people thought like that. That's. I thought. I thought like that. I thought that if the people didn't wear masks and they didn't get vaccinated, they're the motherfuckers that are going to keep this thing going. And I thought all that until I got vaccine injured, which was early on in early 2021. And then when I looked into it, it turned out they were lying about everything. So my point is, it, I've had conversations like this and it's very frustrating, but but I don't try to deem, I, you know, I don't think you do either. I, we we, we want to be able to have conversations with people. No, no, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to demonize anybody you know, listen, I, I also the same thing when they were all jumping down on Joe Rogan uh, and they all they were all Joe Rogan's friends and they were telling, mad at him. I, I was like, hey, man, you should, you know, I think you're making a mistake being so mad at him. But but I didn't I understood why they were so mad at him, but they were wrong. They were wrong. And. I knew something also, you know, I, I have a really good friend who works in Nicaragua. He grows cigars in Nicaragua. I think I told you this. And they don't ha- they didn't have a COVID breakout in Nicaragua because they all take ivermectin regularly from the government as a malaria thing, right? 
Well, I got to push back on you there, Mike, as YouTube. Yeah. Uh, Does that slow the spread in the hospitals? I I Ivermectin is not. Your miracle horse drug? It has not, <laughs> it has not been approved by the FDA to treat uh, COVID, so we can't rec recommend that whatsoever. And they have to push back on you on that. So just to let Tell you Tell them know. they're people. Well, don't push, too, well, don't push too hard. Because, um, <laughs> okay. I won't. Because I got a horse that'll kick you right in the head. <laughs> Um, listen, here's the thing, man. I, I got I, I got a vaccine and then I got COVID. And I I happen to be somebody who had been reading enough about it. And, and I went over and got a dose of ivermectin from Bobby and I had COVID for about a day and a half. So, so. I was uh, I, I was also prescribed ivermectin and i was in a test i was in a uh, study where they were trying to figure out how to treat people like me and that was the, they, there's they gave, no treating people like you there's no treating people <laughs> like me but there was a lot of stuff there was a lot of stuff and um that i took and ivermectin was one of them but of course we have to tell you remind people that the fda does not approve ivermectin as a treatment for covid19 at all so and i look you get to the so i i uh, let's just. I just want to get back to this. It's it's really an interesting article, and you 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 talk about Chris Rock and you talk about his uh, kind of journey when he was super edgy and then he stopped being ed edgy. But now you say he's coming back. You talk about Dave Chappelle. You talk about a lot of people. Dave Smith in this article. Sarah Silverman. You talk about a lot of people. Um, hey, listen. One of the things I talk about is your special, which I gotta say, man, I really loved your special so much. And I, uh, it's one, I, I think it's, it actually was the thing that started me to write the article because I thought your special was so brave and so great and fu really funny. I, I just, you know, I, I really, uh, I got into it cause I saw you do a few minutes of it at that theater in, in, um, what's it called again? The theater yes. that we, at uh, the two roads theater in, in the studio two city roads theater, but you, you really, um, the special you didn't do, you did, oh, didn't do so much of the special at that that night, but it's really it's really a way to you found a way to just find so much comedy gold in all of this, and it, it's really one of my favorite specials in a long time. Wow, well, I, I'm I really, really love it. I'm really flattered that you you, you said that. I really appreciate the compliments, and uh, I didn't care for it myself. <laughs> Chris yeah. didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope you don't keep it to yourself. Spread it around. But um, well, you know, you have it on you have it on your site, you know, and so yeah. I, I well, I'm gonna I'm, I'll release it soon. Uh, but yeah, I, is, how would you how will you do it? You have it on YouTube. I'll just probably put just up? put it up on YouTube. But a lot of it, uh, oh, I don't know. I can't you can't say on YouTube. So, oh, that's right. That's yeah, right. I wonder if I wonder what I could say about January sixth on YouTube. I wonder what I could you say. Pull one of those information bars under each joke. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I don't know if I, I I talk about ivermectin in that special. I talk about the vax not being a and don't uh, even talk about it. I, <laughs> <laughs> but let me get back to your article, and you say, um, let's be honest, no one trusts much of anything about authority anymore. It's the number one reason that stand-up is so strong right now. That stand-up podcasts like Joe Rogan's, Tim Dillon's, Jimmy Dore's are so popular that they're telling the truth about not believing they're hearing the truth. So when we feel like we're being lied about it, we tell the truth about it. But other people, it's risky to tell the truth about it, so they don't. Not just that. If you work in any lot in showbiz, you had two or three or four shots mandatory, and there was no getting out of it. And you're like, well, I don't want to lose my job. So imagine that it is true, and you just got punked out like that right? for a job in showbiz, which is what everybody did. So that's a load-bearing narrative now on so many levels that you can't acknowledge. No, I don't believe that anti-science thing, because this is the last thing I believe about it, and it's fine. Yep. Plus, I had four shots. I wouldn't have... I put that in my kids. I wouldn't have done that if it was dangerous. That's there's a lot riding on this. Listen, and here's the thing: I'm not anti-vax. Me no. neither. I, me neither. I I think the vax worked and it was there at the right time. And and there's but but it's also a lot of people have been hurt by it because that's what happens. You, we paid the price of having to do it real fast. But don't lie that it that that it had that we didn't have to pay that price. It's not like and, we can sue. And, 
right? And we're not, it's not like we can sue, and we were lied to. We would they didn't get yes. it wrong. It wasn't because they were moving too fast. They hid data. They didn't want the FDA didn't want to release the vaccine trial data for seventy five years. But the bigger, the, not only that, not what happened to people physically. Okay, that's that's another. But the, I'm talking about what happened to us culturally when people did right. their mask came off and they became authoritarian Nazis. And even people like I've, I've said this on the show that people who were supposed to stand up and have a sense of history about informed consent and experimental medical treatments and turning right. us against each other and, st and staying skeptical of big pharma and government, especially when they come together. And so that those people like Chomsky, he said that the unvaccinated should separate themselves from society. And when asked how they were getting food and water, he said that's their problem. Those are and he'll never apologize for it either. Chomsky no. has not apologized for it. So what if he did, it would go along way to make people like me and you feel whole again and feel like we can maybe get a little bit of our reputations back but they won't chomsky is just as big a coward as the people he's critiqued all his life he just no because and what is no, the point i think of he should have to go listen to neil young over and over again for the rest of his life in a small <laughs> little room <laughs> And Neil Young tells his stuff his wife told him yeah. for an hour. <laughs> Neil Young, before COVID, was protesting GMOs in food. And then all of a sudden, when an experimental mRNA vaccine came along, he had no questions. And you were a jerk if you didn't take it. It's the craziest right. thing I've ever seen. So, That's right. Well, That's right. And by the way, life. I would have rather yeah. them say, listen, this is a vaccine. We rushed it through. It's not going to be perfect. And, and, you're right. You're, you're absolutely right, Kurt. You know, some people are going to have to sue this to get get justification, and they they should have they should have been okay with that. The big pharmacy could have handled those lawsuits, you know. Mm -hmm. And and they it, that's you that's the biggest problem. Nobody believes anybody because everybody formed a circle and decided to lie to everybody's face and comedy fell down on the job stand-up comedians fell down they became repeaters of propaganda the most insidious evil propaganda that turned people against each other instead of against a big lie the de the virus's net was never as deadly as they said it was because they that, weren't it, curious i think they weren't curious no, that's they right. Were, they weren't. They were the opposite. They, but what, again, I, I've told you this before is that comedians I know that are still don't think we landed on the moon and think Elvis is still alive had no questions about COVID and that nothing about any of the lockdowns, mass, herd immunity, natural immunity, the vaccine. No, no. And if you did have a question, just like you experienced in your conversation with your friend, that they, they, they weren't, it was you, they were impenetrable to facts. And information, even if you ask them where they got their information was, they wouldn't tell you. They you, didn't get it. They did their duty and well, didn't get but, it. But they here's, got, here's yes. the thing, Jimmy. At the very beginning, you said to me, since COVID, this has been going on for a while now, and mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with COVID. Yep. It, it's, it's, you know, let me tell you, as soon as, as soon as we left Afghanistan, we just jumped into this Ukrainian thing, and everybody of a certain type of person put out a Ukrainian flag out on their their front of their house or on their Instagram files or whatever mm -hmm. profiles. And they didn't ask, they didn't do any reading. They didn't really. They, they there was no curiosity. Well, why why is this so important? What 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 what? You just it was just when you would ask people about it about the Ukraine and what what is this really and why what what was well, Putin is Hitler and and we're saving democracy and I gotta go, <laughs> my, <laughs> you know. My and dear, it, oh. it it was the same exact thing. It was that same symptom of no curiosity. And if you had any curiosity or if you had any opinion any different, you were part of the problem. You know, not only did you like Trump, you liked you liked Hitler's yes. dead body. You liked, <laughs> you liked his mother. Right. You know, it, and it just came out of nowhere and that, you know, I would say because I have the my best. The, I'm talking about my best friends. I would say, what well, what happened to you like hating 
the FBI. I know. <laughs> you know? And they'd say, yeah, but, you know, that was, you know what? That's this, That was a different time. I'd say, no, it's the same time. It's the same FBI. Yeah. I, um, let me get, so, it, so you're, yeah, I did. So, and, you know, we'll talk about John Stewart real quickly is that we covered it on this show. John Stewart went on Stephen Colbert's show and he told the truth about the Wuhan lab virus. And that it came from the uh, vi- the COVID nineteen came from a Wuhan lab virus. I told and, you he's sorry for that. And Stephen Col- <laughs> and and the and the and the Hillary Clinton voters and the Joe Biden voters have not let him forget about that. In fact, he got ex- excised from polite society, and he they were telling him to go f himself, and he's a right winger. All the things they say to anybody, and which by the way, this is all cult behavior. All the comedians I know. Uh, except for maybe two, acted like they were in a cult during COVID. They're acting like they're in a cult during Ukraine. They won't, they're not going to, and John Stewart, so ever since he did that, ever since he told the truth about the Wuhan COVID-19 virus, he's been trying to get back into the good graces of those people who ostracized him for telling the truth, not for lying, for telling the truth. And so what is what has he been doing? Well, he did an interview with Condoleezza Rice and Hillary Clinton where he didn't lay a glove on him gave him a tongue bath he did that and then he pinned a medal on an actual nazi at disney world he he flew down there at the behest of the defense department and hung a nazi a medal on a nazi and everybody knows he did it because joe rogan talked about it on his show so everybody watches joe rogan I brought it up on his yeah show. you brought it up as much as pot i don't think john knew but he ain't talked about it since it's been out and so then after he did that he did the condoleezza rice hillary clinton interview he hung a nazi wait you don't think that john knew that he did it the guy he, covered his his nazi tattoo with like a red armband or something so he had a nazi tattoo but the guy's a well-known nazi it wasn't like oh, this guy. John didn't know it. And so, well, that's now why you he don't does. Do research. <laughs> and that's why you don't do your own research. Yeah. And so now he knows, and he still hasn't said anything. He hasn't apologized for it. You, you crazy. So, uh, and then the, the latest thing he did, he brought on, uh, a, he had a, a show about vaccines. And of course, he doesn't bring on anybody like RFK Jr. or Robert Malone or, or Dr. McCullough or anybody who's a leader in their field that would have a counter narrative. He brings on three bought and paid for by big pharma liars. And he pretends like he's doing a deep dive into the great work vaccines are. Turns out they didn't have any questions. There was no problems. And um, so that's what John Stewart's. Been. And so this is what we're talking about. He's been he was fake brave. You even talk about it in the article and and it's 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 disgusting. And it's like, I want John Stewart. He was my hero. I, you know, I had comedic heroes. He's definitely one of them. I, that show he did was amazing. And now he's not anymore. Now it's like, I'm doing better work than you. Shame on you, John Stewart. I'm not even well, you trying. Are. You I'm are. Even, and let me tell you, the guy who really is fake brave, and I, I didn't, you know, I didn't write it to name names. To me, the guy who is like the epitome of this is fake brave is Stephen Colbert. It's horrible what he's did. It, 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 it's like you just want to go, wait a minute. You're right. That's like saying I run so fast whenever I go downhill. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah, because it, 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 it's, it's exactly what you're doing. It's, it's so easy to be brave when you're, when you're. Who called you're, him brave? You're, you're you're selling that kind of bean, you know. It's it's uh, you know, and, and and my thing is, <clears throat> it's not you're not you're not helping society by giving them what you think everybody's supposed to hear. And and, but, and oh, I, I love it. James Comey came out the other day. Uh huh. This, this was so amazing. He came out and said, you know, the biggest problem with Trump winning again is he would weaponize the. The, the systems of government. Yes. <laughs> you know? a- after five straight years of Russiagate, by, which was invented you know? by the FBI. And the, I don't know. Or Twitter, everything on Twitter that came out of the entire. All FBI. that. Yeah. Yeah. All the Twitter files, all the government and social media colluding to sub. No, it's Trump. He's the ultimate evil. We have to always vote Biden. I saw you that. Know, you know, I'm just saying it's like there, any, there, there's no irony to that. There's no irony for James Comey to say uh, we have to be afraid of letting someone else's ha- hands on the wheel because they're going to weaponize the uh, instruments of government. <laughs> the FBI that killed Martin Luther King. <laughs> anyway. yeah, you know, it's it just, uh, but so I'm saying it's not just COVID. It's just we don't trust 
anybody anymore. And 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 I, I don't tr- I, I didn't trust the Trump administration. I didn't trust the Obama administration. I don't. And it's a problem. So if you on top of it, you know, at least in the 60s and, and era, you know, you have guys like Lenny Bruce and George Carlin and you know, even though Mort Saul, I don't think he ever really figured out how to be really funny, you know, (laughs) you know, but at least, you know, or he, you had guys that weren't, Richard Pryor was hysterical, but you know, you you had comedians who, you know, these guys would go to jail if they had to, to get their shit off, to keep doing their stuff. Lenny Bruce did, right? Yeah. The rest of them did. George Carlin did, but you just, you just, you know, so that's why, and by the way, you know, when I wrote this thing and then put it up this morning, you, you see all these people giving me comments. He, she's not brave. He's not brave. Forget this guy. This guy, Joe Rogan. You know what? Everybody has their different version of what's brave. But to me, the only thing that matters is who, who who's willing. Here's the biggest thing. You said it. You wanted to be in with the John Stewart, with the elite crowd and, and and be invited to the right parties. That's what that's what they really want. At the end of the day, they don't want to lose their place, their card key. Yep. To, yeah. To go to the right, to be in the right club, you know. And I remember when Louis C.K. got um, canceled. You know. He had a great joke. I don't know if he got a great joke or I actually heard him say it one night just hanging out he, to some friends. He, he said, you know, I'm really fine and everything. And I, I, if I found out who my friends are and everything, but at a certain point I go, boy, do I miss my friends? <laughs> you know? There you go. I and, don't want to know who my real friends are. That's why I was famous. <laughs> what? He said, I don't want to know who my real friends are. That's why I got famous. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, but 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 you know you, you, that's the thing when you a lot of these guys you know and you know one thing you know Rogan he just he made his own pack his own group and he didn't he doesn't he doesn't want to go to the great to the right dinner parties. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. I I'm right there with you. You know, I remember when I was at the Young Turks, Jenk, you used to get invited to the Washington White House correspondence dinner, and I'm like, what? You want to go to that? <laughs> You're supposed to. You're supposed to go there and fucking make fun of those people. Those people are the problem. Let me let me just finish your article real here, or real quick. It's you. You go. What was true was that people who didn't take the vaccine didn't hurt anyone else. They didn't jam up hospitals, and they weren't the people from The Walking Dead. They didn't spread anything to anyone. They weren't ignoramuses. They had questions. We were told something completely different, way different. That's a big one to get wrong. There were also good doctors, good scientists, good writers that had done a hell of a lot of research. We had the right to hear it. And Joe Rogan, Jimmy Dore, Tim Dillon, Dave Smith, Jim Brewer, and everyone else had every right to ask questions and make jokes about it. Yet something went goofy in our society, and suddenly we were all supposed to not color outside the lines, no matter what they sensed, smelled, thought, heard, or had a hunch was off about covid Elections, lockdowns, the Ukraine, transgenders, Hunter Biden's Russian bought computer, teaching kindergartners how to give head, George George Floyd's sainthood, Clarence Thomas's defamation campaign, that special needs kid who wandered into Wisconsin with the shotguns or anything about any stripper anywhere that wasn't banging Donald Trump. For most comedians, none of the above have been jokeable subjects since 2015. That's a big, that's, I mean, that, that kind of, for me, that's. Well, just that, if they want to make it and get on like a TV thing. Right. That's, that's what it is. That's what it is. You could do all those. Uh, you, you do uh, the stand up. You can always do it. Have your own audience, which is why it's smart that Rogan built that podcast up like that. Yes. But all the people that want to be in showbiz. Bobby Lee said to me, I came on my podcast. He goes, well, I want to be in showbiz. We weren't talking about COVID, but that's not the same as being a stand up. And that's showbiz right. dictates to. To the stand up. The stand up does not dictate to showbiz. Show, I always just wanted to be a stand up. That was my that was my problem in showbiz. I'm sorry, guys. I disagree. At this point in 2023, and maybe it's just because I'm old and I I've been around. So I think you guys are in showbiz. 
you know <laughs> i think that i think the rest of it's dead what you think going on stephen colbert's dusty ass phony show no not at all or, uh, i mean what, what's showbiz dead. what showbiz that crap that that crap what that, the the adsense the yeah. stuff that the advertisers that's that's what got manipulated ultimately was when all the esg nonsense came out and the advertisers who's going to advertise with what and everybody's hemorrhaging money so they got to commit to these rules and then it's like when uh years ago pop tarts a bunch of comics were, we were doing like a fake stand-up bit for a pop tarts uh-huh campaign yeah and i had to keep rewriting my toothless pop tarts material over and over i had like two jokes because it, you know i would keep messing up the ad for pop tarts and i and we, yeah, i got pants like none of that was worth it to have to sit everything's that a corporate ad for pop tarts no matter what it's all corporate gigs now those used to be the gigs that suck <laughs> well, that's that's the beauty for now of social media for me and the YouTube is that I don't need c traditional legacy show business at all. Yeah, right. And I I went right past the gatekeepers, and as soon as I started my own show, it took off. So, um, I, I I'll take the compliment, Mike. I am in show business. But yes, you are. I mean, I I don't know what kind of censorship. YouTube is giving you, but they better stop <laughs> soon, or they're going to lose it. You know. But um, I don't know that. But I, I do know that you are, and and the, to me, and that's why I started Stand Up World, and I write about people that I believe, and it's not a political thing to me. It truly isn't. I I, I really like to write. You know, I've I've laughed woman, at Leanne Morgan. You know, do you know who that is? Uh huh. Well, she's a great comic. Uh huh. Started her own specials on YouTube and. And then eventually, her fans kept writing Netflix, so they gave her a, they gave her a special. But she sells out huge concert halls, and she doesn't need Netflix. She can go back to YouTube. But she created her own lane, and right. she built her own world. And I write about her a lot. I write about people that create their own world that don't need you know. And I believe me, I'm so pro this writer strike, but. If you spend too much time complaining about the executives and how greedy they are, which they are, you're that same time you should be going, <laughs> we're in an era, let's create our own world. Let's do what you guys are doing. Let's let I'm gonna create my own lane. I'm not gonna let an executive make that much money off me. Or if they do, I'm gonna do it because I decided to let them, you know, because it was a good deal for me. Well, Mike, you know, now, like, when I first got into stand-up, it was, like, all my, it was all writing and everything I did was for Viacom for, like, 10 years. I didn't have a concept of fighting on podcasts or doing your own thing was even a, you know, Action. I'm not even that old, and, I, and I'm old to compare, all kids now coming up all know that for the most part. It's just there's still a sad allure of, like, I don't know, the cool kid table in some way, and it's not anymore. All the people that were cool got kicked off of that table. Yeah, all, well. That's right. Everybody else is like on guard. You know, again, people I like and I'm friendly with all the time, I can watch them. And, and it, everybody's so trained to think it's normal. Like, uh, what? Like, not having an opinion about any of these things, just bringing it up. Just bringing it up. I don't think we should be talking about this unless there's somebody who personally knew George Floyd who's next to me who would talk about this controversial yeah. topic. That's you, you have it programmed yeah. in, you should have a commissar. Yeah. Everybody just went along with that, which, if you work in an office like a jerk off, sure, you should do that. I got into this because I don't ever want to do that. I know. I know. Well, Mike, it's really a great article. I, I want to encourage everybody to uh, go check it out at uh, your Substack, Stand Up World. No, it's not my Substack. It's StandUpWorld.com. Oh, I'm sorry, StandUpWorld.com. Okay, and um, it's great. It's really. It's. I mean, I. You know, me. Of course, I'm. I love reading about comedy. I like talking comedy. And uh, it's really a great read. And everything you said about Chris Rock, I thought was right on. And uh, this, uh, by the way, I wasn't slamming Chris. I no, no, him. you you complimented him highly, very highly. And everybody's career, you know, lots of people's careers go like this. And uh, you know, he's back on top. So when good you're for him. famous and you get to talk to all these other, fam I can't believe what people I know is not really anything guy. I know a bunch of people. I'm like, well, I can't believe I know that guy. When you're really famous. The, the biggest elites are giving them the inside track. Mm -hmm. Why would you go look up to see if they're wrong? Like, oh, I don't need to read. I know the guy. <laughs> My friend from intelligence just told me all about how Trump's colluding. 
That's I get a lot of that. I get a lot of guys go, well, I know a guy in the CIA, and he people, and he, I'm sure they know a guy in the CIA. Yeah, and that's guy yeah, guy is lying because you, you're dumb and you don't it, read things, so you'll so, pass it along. I know, and then they repeat it. But can I tell you one more thing? I, 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 we run out of time. No, go ahead. You know, it, it, it's really what, what, what Chris said is right. You know, I think a new guy coming in understands it, but everyone they're still so allured of you know, a, a dying animal or something. You know, last night I was at the improv. I had to sit at the improv and, and I was talking to a buddy of mine who's a hot comedian. And he, he said something that was so funny and real and raw and great. And I said, are you doing that? He goes, no, I, yeah, I can't do that on stage. On stage? Really? And I said, what are you talking about? That's he goes, no, I can't, I can't, I can't I no, no. <laughs> and then afterwards, we were talking about it some more, and he goes, you can have it, you can run with it. And I said, are you kidding me? You would give me that? Why wouldn't you do that? And he said, no, well, you can do it. He goes, I might come back and take it from you if you make it work. <laughs> I said, well, then I wouldn't do it, <laughs> you know, but... But he, I, I, I was just so blown away because it's so smart. So he said, yeah. if it doesn't work, like it's cursed, you take it. But if I find out it did work, <laughs> I might come take he it. He was back. kidding. He was uh -oh. kidding. Honestly, the truth is, he was given. He's it just to a me. pussy, not a not an. And that evil comedian guy. was Dana Carvey. <laughs> no, no, it was it was a, it was a young kid. Like I got bigger it. Than he, but but it, but it was like he he just really was like I don't want to I I I don't want I I get in too much trouble with it, you know. And and I want, but he doesn't I hope understand. He's in movies at least, but to to throw away the actual basic thing like that. You know, I hope it's like I got a movie deal I might lose. Yeah. And not no, just but, the potential but it, but it's, of it's, something. But what he doesn't understand is he's missing the boat. He just, and I love the guy, but he's just like, you're wrong. You don't, you don't, you're thinking wrong. Mm. You're thinking wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It's real. It's raw. It's, it came out of you for a reason. But, but that's okay. That's, that's just, you know, where I hear we're at. I hear you. It's a pretty hacky philosophy. <laughs> let me show. Let me show the article again before we uh, say goodbye. There it is. What does hey. it mean to be a brave? Be brave as a comedian in the world today. And of course, you're truly right in the middle. I'm very flattered. Thank you very much for the of nice. Course, you got the you got the, the top spot. Hey, so <laughs> by the way, anybody lives in L.A., uh, Jimmy's going to come out to uh, the Ice House, right, with me. Yeah, July second, correct? Is that oh, a Saturday? No, no July second. Um, there's uh, some really hacky, oh, not okay. brave people. What day no, is it? July first. Oh, July first. Okay, at the Ice House Saturday in Pasadena. Night. Saturday night, I'll be doing a spot on you on that show with you. There'd be a bunch of funny people on that show. I about. did it recently. It was good with the hockey glass room you told me about. Yeah, yeah, with the hockey glass room. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's funny. So we'll be there July first on Mike Binder's show. Everybody, come uh, say hi. Okay, Mike Binder, thank you. Uh, Thanks a lot. Hey, guys, it's really Mike. nice to be on your show. I'm a, I'm a fan of both of you. I, I, I appreciate you coming on. And, uh, Steph, is Steph here? Steph, I'm right here, Steph buddy. Steph is here. Right oh, good. here. I can't see anybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Nice to have. Thanks for having me on. Okay, it's a pleasure. See you soon, pal. Hey, everybody, only $10 to go see my new stand-up special, COVID Lies Are Funny, at JimmyDoor.com, and come see us do a live show. We're going to be in Coho's, New York, Hartford, Connecticut, Bakersfield, California, Baltimore, San Francisco, Huntington Beach, Rosemont, and Chicago, Las Vegas, Salt Lake City, and more. We're going to be in New York, Stamford, Connecticut, Pottstown, Pennsylvania, San Diego, everywhere. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all our tickets.